Yo, it's me. It's me. It's Sai Zanzi. I love this guy. Sai Zanzi is making a name for himself. He's really killing it out there. Somebody who did do something very bad this week is a guy we've all been gunning for for a long time. We've all been praying for this guy's downfall, and it finally came. A guy I can't stand. New York comedian. Very young guy. He still tries to play off this young thing. His dad died in 9-11, okay? He was uh, hired uh, as a cast member on SNL. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Pete Davidson's downfall. Here we go. This was just, this is brand new, too. This just happened. Pete Davidson, he's always been a, he's been terrible this year. Uh, it first started first started notice, noticing Pete Davidson was crazy when he started doing this whole I need to go to rehab to quit pot. I'm crazy. I, I can't be. I need to go to rehab for marijuana. And I couldn't believe it. I go, what a bitch, man. You know, this guy actually thinks marijuana is his problem. He's got to go to rehab for that. You know, come on. And it kept getting worse on Instagram. I noticed patterns like Pete Davidson would delete all of his Instagram photos in a in a rage, and then he would post them all back up, and he would change his Instagram bio to stuff like, I hate Instagram. And then he started dating Larry David's daughter, Cassie David, and this made me sick. He started calling her beautiful. Cassie David looks like Larry David if she, if he was younger and he put on a wig and got uglier in the face. Cassie David's got like a thin body. All right. Uh, her breasts are where they should be. She's got a little leg muscle up here that curves. So I think that tricks people into thinking this could be a hot babe. But then it's like, how could somebody be a hot babe uh, like when their face looks like that? You know, you look at her face, it's like the Baba Duke, Allison Rosen. You got the hook nose, you got the thin little cut in half earthworm lips, and you've got this Jewish. I'm I don't I have any problem with the Jews. You'll see when I bring up this guy, David Brinkman, there's obviously no issue with the Jews here on this show. But she's got a Jewishy looking face, and you go, I can't keep hearing Pete Davidson. He goes around town. I'm so lucky. I got the most beautiful girl in the world. I mean, she is hot. Have you looked at her face? She's so hot. It's like, dude, she's a rat, bro. Uh, Pete Davidson then did the unthinkable uh, as far as all you guys. Crooked Hillary know. You guys remember Crooked Hillary? Ooh, drain the swap, huh, fellas? I know a lot of people listening out there. You can't stand Hillary. They call You know what they call her? Killery, because there's rumors she's killed so many of these guys. I hate Hillary, too, of course. I hated her before I even knew she was a Democrat. I didn't know what she was when they first started announcing her. Go, I'm just open and willing to see who she is, and then I didn't like her because of who she was. Pete Davidson, what happened? Someone just posted an article in the chat saying that Pete Davidson is dating Ariana Grande now. This can't be. I don't believe This can't believe be because this. this ties into one of my uh, eighth downfalls of the week. I know. Hold on. We'll get back to that one. Sorry. Keep a pin in that. It's pinned. Dave, Pete Davidson goes on to do something even more despicable last year. Remember, uh, out of nowhere, and this was real, this shocked everybody, he got a Hillary Clinton tattoo of her face smiling like a young Hillary Clinton and he goes this is like my biggest idol this is like happy birthday Hillary and I believe he got the tattoo of Hillary on Hillary's birthday for her birthday and he put this on Instagram people were fucking sickened as you should be I mean even like Hillary supporters were like oh that's sick and Pete Davidson has, like, really bothered us ever since. There's been more instances, I'm sure. But this week it was announced, you know, this was all Pete Davidson had, and this week it was announced Pete Davidson and Cassie David have broken up. She's dumped him. 
He's a bipolar maniac. So it turns out he uh, he was diagnosed with, what was it, uh, borderline personality disorder. And uh, boy, do I hate people with these disorders and stuff like this. I hate bipolar people. I hate skit shows. I hate borderline personality disorder. Those disorders, that's the reason why everything's in turmoil. Anytime you go, why is this happening? Why is this you know, why is everything such shit? It's because of the, these mentals, okay? And the mentals are everywhere. Uh, I believe Jordan Peterson, one of the uh, Sven's uh, heroes, this guy Jordan Peterson, who's just got a positive outlook on life, he said, well, sure, one out of 20 people have a mental disorder, of course. I think that number is even lower now. I think it's one out of every 10 people have a mental disorder, and that's uh, alarming. Yeah, it's it's getting uh, it's getting scary. Believe me, I've run into these people. I've had Uber drivers chase me down alleys. You know, I've had people bang down my door trying to sell me uh, a, a different, cheaper, cleaner form of energy. I said, "No, be gone." Uh, yeah, yeah, the mentals are taking over. Dave, Pete Davidson, he's one of the mentals. Uh, Cassie David breaks up with him. Okay, this was like the biggest thing in his life. This is all he had. This is what was keeping him going. And we saw, we all saw this news and we go, oh boy, he's going to go dark. You know, this guy is going to flip. Uh, and he's already started to. Uh, the day he was dumped, he was booked, and this guy relates to The day he was dumped, he was booked to do Peter Rosenberg's new show on complex and if you don't know who peter rosenberg is he's this bald little white jewish sheckler who is ebro's co-host you know ebro the big hip-hop rap guy you've probably seen him in the a couple of these clips covered in kanye he always wears a stussy dad hat and he has a giant beard uh, and he's always, uh, you know, making fun of the people uh, that aren't, like, black enough. I used to really like Ebro, but then he got into this, like, Black Lives Matter type of attitude. Where it's revealed that he doesn't really like white people. And it's like, okay, well, I can't like you if deep down you, like, hate white people and want to see them dead. Like, that's your deep down thing. Like, that's who you really are. So, yeah, I liked Ebro. I can't relate to a guy who really does hate white people. You know, as bad as these whites have been over the last couple of years. If you're a, a white guy who hates blacks, I'm not vibing with you either. And if you're a black guy who hates whites, it just takes away, okay? It takes away from your whole, oh, this guy is cool. You know, and if you are a white guy and you're really into a black guy who hates whites, like, what are you doing? Why are you putting yourself through that? Because there are a lot of them. Where you could really tell over this past uh, last year, a lot of black guys come on. You could tell, oh, they really hate whites. Like that dude at the Oscars or the Grammys or whatever. Who was that dude? He was like half black. He gave that whole speech. It's like a dark day will come. You got to stop killing us, coppers. You know, uh, so I can't relate to Ebro anymore in this Peter Rosenberg, his sidekick, has gotten even worse. I mean, this guy is going through a grand depression. We're going to show you a clip from his show. I'm going to introduce you to Peter Rosenberg. And we're also going to show you Pete Davidson's downfall, what this breakup has done to him. Pete Davidson is a mess. He's in pieces. He's falling apart. And he happened to be booked on May 17th on Peter Rosenberg's new show on Complex. It's like a talk show. This was the same day uh, he broke up with Kazzy. But he was booked to do the show, and he had to do it, and we have tape from it. It's a great tape. Let me introduce you to Peter Rosenberg, and let me, uh, who's been vile, by the way. Vile. Towards white people, uh, towards, you know, just a virtuous, virtue signaling Sheckler all the way, like in a disgusting way where even the black guys are like, Okay, Rosenberg, you could stay in our culture for one more month. Keep it up. Like, they even know he's full of shit. 
All right, where is this guy? Is he under Peter Davidson? Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. It's on my beautiful list. Pete Davidson. I'm looking at the list. is just very long today. We've got a lot of guys on here today. Uh, Melton, Count, Landau, the Pete bottom, the Cop, the Red Band, Red Bauer, Chris D'Elia, it's Josh. It's above Red. Oh, see what happened here today again? See how this keeps happening? But there it is. Oh, see how this one's hiding? This is covering it up. Here, okay, I'll hold send on. It to no, you. no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. We just got to restart. I use this program called Things. Things from my show notes. People want to see these behind the scenes uh, processes here. I use a note program called Things, and it's been a little buggy lately. So it was covering up the Pete Davidson stuff. Pete Davidson gets up. Pete Davidson on the Peter Rosenberg show. <laughs> Here we go. One of the best interviews I've ever seen. This was on the day of his dumping. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest tonight is one of the youngest cast members in the history of SNL and even lets me leash on enough to hang out in his dressing room during the show, so I had to make it up to him. My guy, Pete Davidson. My like guy. Oh, and there's Pete. He's a mess. He's doing this thing where he's like, fuck all this. Who cares about this show? Who cares about entertainment? So he's a mess. It's like when you see, like, in a movie, like, a guy who gets fired from his job and then he like shuffles in at 9 p.m. to his wife and his family and his tie's undone and he's rambling about how nothing matters. It's kind of like how he's acting here. He's got his hat backwards. He's looking greasy. He looks like he hasn't slept all night. Big bags under his eyes. Thanks, man. You're here. Yeah. Now, let's be honest. We kind of started off on a bad note. You only asked Shout for something out. simple. You wanted a bacon, egg, and cheese. Oh, I thought you meant the fact that I said yes to this at all. <laughs> ah, no, the you ask like at like two in the morning at like uh, ask, you're like, hey, you want to do my show? And I'm like, yeah. And now it's here. Well, no, no. By the way, it's a step worse. Than now you it's did here. One, you randomly texted me the other day and was like, dude, how's next Wednesday? Yeah. I was like, sure. I was trying to be nice. And then this morning comes. Yeah. Well, I didn't sleep because I have a, a another job. What do you uh, What do you do? Oh, I just so, I'm all, I stand in the background of this show uh, <laughs> called SNL. I'm I like, stand in the background of this show called SNL. When did we just hear him saying some shit like that again? Was it on sneaker shopping? Yeah, he was on that sneaker shopping. Pull that up episode. too. See if you could find that. You got it. Sneaker shopping. Every time you see Pete Davidson on a show, he makes a comment, a sideways comment. Where he goes, "Oh yeah, I'm on the background of this show called SNL." They never put me in any sketches. And it's like, I think that's really bothering him. It's really starting to get to him. He brings it up every time. He even did it on Sneaker Show. It's like, dude, cheer the fuck up, man. You know? What do you want? What should you be? And here is the Sheckler, Peter Rosenberg. One of the worst guys ever this year. Uh, I don't know how old he is. He's very old. He's a pudgy little, uh, what do they call Sommelier. Like that guy from Girl and the Goat, the original Sheckler. There was this guy who looked just like this guy. He worked at a restaurant called The Girl and the Goat, and his job was Sommelier. Sommelier, is that the right word? Yep. <laughs> this is a guy who just comes around to the table and he recommends wines. It's all he does for the company. He's their wine guy. He sorts it out. And he looked just like Pete Rosenberg, who's walking around, scooting. He's got that little booty. You ever see a short little guy like this, and their booty's sticking out? And you're going, put that big booty away. You know, that looks fucking shit. I don't like a guy. You ever see a guy with, like, a booty? And it pops out, and their shirt kind of sticks in there? That's, like, the worst look you could have. It's worse than any look I could have. Uh, so there's a guy like this, and I remember we called up the girl on the goat. I said, hey, you know, can I speak to the house Sheckler? And they go, the house Sheckler? What is that? I go, oh, your wine guy, whatever that is. And they they put me through, and then I accused this guy. I'll never forget. I I called them, and I said, uh, yeah, your, your wine guy, your house Sheckler. And I kept saying house Sheckler. I go, keeps walking by my table. He's passing gas. He's farting. And then he's walking by, and he's leaving us in the farm they go oh my god i'm so sorry you know and then this poor guy 
had to go back to work. All his co-workers just got a complaint call about him farting up a storm near the patrons. Imagine if they had to address this guy. So, But different guy. This is Peter Rosenberg. He looks exactly like that old Sheckler <laughs> from The Girl and the Goat, the farting guy. Okay? Some of you remember that. Uh, but he's even worse. I mean, he's against, like, everything that we're for in terms of, like, Trump Nation and all that stuff. Uh, it's it's difficult, but he's on the side of like the Black Lives Matter guys, where they're like extreme about it. Okay, he's anti Kanye. He's disgusted by Kanye's slavery comment that was taken out of context. Remember that? So that's the kind of guy he is now. Virtual virtue signaling, bald, you know. And he was like, his whole career has been this. I'm a white guy, but I'm involved in New York hip hop radio. I better play my cards right. And, you know, he has tiptoed around that issue for the last 20 years in the black community. And he has tripled down on it now, now that he knows every black person is looking to get all the fucking whites out of the way. So, you know, they, they are very strict with, uh, with, uh, uh, what is his name? Peter Rosenberg, uh, they're very strict with him, and he is very compliant to that. So that is the type of guy we're dealing with now. Uh, let's get back to his interview with Peter Davidson, another Jewish globalist. A guy that, like, walks in and has one line and then just stands in the background for the rest of the show. Well, yeah. people love you when you do that. Hey, man, I'm a one-word one wonder. Uh, for sure. <laughs> show, show us what... Oh, so we asked so for bacon, like, egg, and cheese. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm half asleep. Man. Look at this. This is a good slam on Complex right now. I hate Complex, by the way, the company. Maybe some of you are too old to remember Complex or too old for Complex, I should say. Complex is the shit, though. You know, if you're one of these young kids, this is where you're getting your news. Remember, uh, what was that motherfucker's name? I always call him Trevor, but I know his name's not Trevor from uh, Complex Fraser. News. Fraser. Of course. Remember I showed you Fraser from Complex News. Complex is where it's all going down now, man. Complex Con, 2J's Kicks was there. You get your sneakers there. Uh, but I've always hated Complex for their shabby performances and their low-budget nonsense. And uh, they've also become super like sjwe i watch this show where it's like behind the scenes complex it's like a vlog they do at the complex offices and there's not a person sitting in one of the offices or one of the chairs that actually deserves to be there there's a latina woman there's a heavy set black woman they've got for all these shows they produce they've just given it to a young latina girl she's the director and producer has she ever directed anything in her life? You know, so they've gone out of control with the diversity thing. It's starting to blow up. All their programming is starting to kind of fail and bomb up. Their latest hire was this Peter Rosenberg. This is his new show. But they're going to give David, this is, this is interesting. If you're a complex hater like me, I suspect many of you are that watch complex flex. You've, uh, you've been frustrated with their antics lately. But they're going to show, Pete David is going to show that Complex, uh, they asked him if he wants anything. You know, he was hungry before the show, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'll have a ham and cheese sandwich. Or I'll have a bacon and egg sandwich. And this is what they got him, okay? So this is shout-outs to Complex. A real rough morning. Uh, this guy's like, come do my new show. Everything's going great. I don't think it's going great because I asked for bacon, egg, and cheese. And these motherfuckers like, what <laughs> the fuck is this? What is that? So he's holding, really, it's, you know, scrambled eggs, some cheese and some bacon on raw wheat bread. You know, untoasted wheat bread. It's really disgusting. And it really goes, so this is what you're doing, Complex. No wonder all this stuff is nonsense. You know, so this is what Fraser works for, this fucking limp sandwich here. Pete Davidson's right. This on the day of his big breakup and Cassie David, you know, shame on you. So now you know how bad Complex is. You know how bad Jordan Rosenberg, Peter Rosenberg is. Now let's see Pete Davidson spiral out of control. You know what that is? This is like like your grandma slapped this shit together. This is from a store. 
Yeah. This is gross, man. This is embarrassing. That is what Joe this Budden was really... talking about when he left Complex. Watch this. Here uh, we go. What... Here's the downfall. <gasps> uh, Too soon? It was a joke. Can Joe Budden shut the fuck up? Like, Whoa! Like, like, stop. Like, who are you? Stop talking. Wow. Uh, he, don't, that's you what... have one song that was in Mean Girls. Go fuck yourself. Okay. He was talking about oh Joe God. Budden, everyone's favorite new internet uh, bald guy. It was all emotional. It was all a dream. It was all emotional. Joe Budden, everybody's favorite rapper. You know, from the uh, Shady Records group. Uh, Joe Budden used to have a show on here called Everyday Struggle. It was very big. Everybody, everybody's tuned in. You've probably seen a YouTube clip. Bald, black guy, beard like me. Even better than me. It's all pubis. His beard. There's not a spot where you could see the skin. There's no, it's just all filled in. Like that game where you would move the magnetic fabric onto the guy's face. So that's what he's like. Nobody really uh, says something like this uh, about Joe Budden. Pete Davidson figures, I got nothing to live for anymore. So you know what? Fuck everybody. Now he's dissing Joe Budden. Joe Budden's got a lot of fans who aren't going to like this. <laughs> like, stop. Like, who are you? Stop talking. Uh, he, don't, that's you what... have one song that was in Mean Girls. Go fuck yourself. Okay. You fucking old tool bag. Wow. What is he going to do, write a diss about me? That's how much of a loser he is. He's like, Whoa. yes, I can diss this comedian. You fucking tool bag. Um, uh, wow. I'll, I'll get you a different sandwich. Um, Thanks. Um, Appreciate um, it. But, uh, so I saw you at the, you let me come up and hang out for the Donald Glover SNL. You can come anytime. And I appreciate that. Yeah, How was that? What did you think of that episode? Uh, it was sick, man. Donald Glover yeah, was sick. sick man. Right, uh, that, that song is fucking <laughs> nuts. Sick. It's the best song of the year. So far. Yeah, to hang out, it came out, the video came out while we were in he, your dress. He like uploaded it while he was on stage. <laughs> I, know. I was like, what a boss. Um, no. You've spoken some about the other Donald who did the show. Oh, yeah. Donald Trump. Uh, what, take me through a little bit. I've never talked to you about he that. He hates what Trump. What was the Donald Trump week like? I was just like, it was just like weird. It was, it was just all like, He's giving up. What is this guy doing here? And like, the Secret Service really wasn't like being that secret. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, they weren't really like, they were watching him, but like, they weren't really watching him. If that makes sense. So you could just go, if you really wanted there to. There were a few times where he was just chilling in the hallway by himself. What? Yo, that's a crazy yeah. thing to even think. So I don't really like, know what to talk about. He's just sitting there, just like looking at shit on the pictures on the walls and stuff. He was like weird all week. He like faked a phone call during the table read. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Hold this on. is all you, breaking you... news, the by the, the way, about read, Trump. He like he has a flip phone, and he just and right as we started, he like he was like, oh, hello. He goes, oh, fantastic. Okay, great. And then he hung up, and he goes, hey, everybody, my book just went number one. <laughs> That never happened. That did not happen. Yeah, and we were, I swear, I swear my life, and we were all like, yo, that phone didn't ring. And like, also, like, how did you, how did he have time to say that? Because you answered and went, yup, oh my God. That's like, he, he didn't, he didn't even go, hello? Oh, wow. So what Pete's doing, he's got nothing to, to live for anymore. You know, Cassie broke up with him, so all the secrets are coming out. You know, NDNA, NDAs, he's, he's ripped them up, he's thrown them away. He doesn't care. Ask and I'll tell him, don't talk about this stuff. You can't be smart to our president, please, okay? He's throwing it all out the door. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> like that. He was just like, hello? Oh, that's great. Oh, great. My book went number one, everybody. And we were like, Yes, Ugh. he does have Crohn's. Have, uh, have you gotten any time this week? <laughs> season finale is this weekend. Oh, yeah. Have, have you gotten any time with uh, Nicki Minaj yet? No, uh, I haven't seen her yet. Uh, but oh. we're all thrilled. You don't know if she's wow. in any sketches yet or anything? No, I don't know yet. Look at you, you fucking little fish. What is she saying? Such man. a little fish. Give like he know, like we're good friends, and he knows like how much trouble I can get in for like what can any you give me? little hair. Yeah, but so then I got to ask you something. People are asking about. Okay, this. so this is uh, pretty big here. We're gonna hear about the breakup, but then we're gonna hear. Remember, this was a big deal that he took a lot of congratulations for. When Pete Davidson went clean, remember Pete Davidson's big problem was, I'm finally going clean for the first time in three years. I'm addicted to marijuana. I have a boost. Remember this? And his big thing was, I'm going clean. I'm going to rehab. And he went to rehab and he got clean. And everyone said, oh, my God, you're so brave. And he was like the uh, spokesperson for going clean for a while. Wait till you hear what this guy's about to say 
Uh, and the new decision he just made after his breakup with Cassie David. You brought it up. Yeah. Uh, every time I've had you up, we've always talked about your relationship with Cassie David. Yes. What's the status? Oh, you fucking... Just dove right in. Uh, yeah. Just diving right in. Yeah. Just going right, right in. Yeah. yeah, we're not together anymore. Okay. Woo! So no more. No the crowd. More. So we don't have anything else to talk about with, related to Cassie. No, no. Oh, we had such good anecdotes in the past. No, a no, very talented girl. She'll be, she'll be great and she'll do fine. Yeah, I think she's going to be okay. Yeah, I think she'll be okay. You're going to be okay. Uh, well, yeah, probably. Oh. She's probably going to be. Yeah, she'll be fine. People know you went to rehab at some point, correct? I mean, I, yeah, I feel like I'm you're, always there. Yeah. yeah, you're very open about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But when I was with you the other day, you definitely seemed like you're comfortably drinking a little oh, bit. Oh, party's back on, Pete. Party's back on. Yeah, no. Party's I mean, back yeah, on. Yeah, I found that I had a mental disorder. I thought I had a drug problem. Yeah, it's, it's a completely different thing. <laughs> you could be sad and do drugs at the same time, evidently. And did you and how did you discover that like in rehab? You're like, ah, oh, this isn't exactly no, what my problem. No, I got cl like sober or whatever, and just didn't like for like three months. Three and I was months, just, like never sadder, and everything was just okay. Way so worse. listen to this guy. Yeah, I got sober for three months, and like nothing worked. I was like, never. S you can't just be sober for three months, bro. You gotta give it a while. You know, even Kumia gave it more than that. Kumia was sober for like. Man, like four months, you know, before he went back to it. So this is scary. He, uh, she breaks up with him. He's got the uh, bipolar disorder, the, the the all the disorders, and now he's just decided he's taking it upon himself. Oh, I could drink. I could do all these drugs. Okay, never been sadder. He says. So why not? You know what? As long as he's going to be sad, why not do all the drug? So this should be great. We never hear about people uh, going back to it and just saying, you know what, I'm going back to drugs, it's going to be great. We got a tremendous downfall lined up for this fella here. Worse. And I, I like t went to this other therapist and like did like this behavioral therapy shit, and they were like, oh, yeah, there's something like, off with your brain. And I was like, oh. And then I just rolled a joint, and I'm, I was back immediately. <laughs> no, and, and by the wow. way, but you, you do deal with like a shitload of anxiety, and the weed helps it, it helps dramatically i think you know <clears throat> they just open a wheat store uh, over here trying to normalize I've seen it you with a this is the narkiest <laughs> thing to say in history but who gives a oh, shit? Yeah, yeah literally i've been around rappers smoking weed for a long time mm -hmm. i've never seen a blunt that is the size of a legitimate full cigar as if the cigar was never <laughs> emptied full of weed oh wow and it was very impressive thanks pete and you take oh. this to the head hold on but this is the part i'm interested in it doesn't. That would that would kill me. I'd be hiding under a couch. Yeah, because you're a fraud. Right. This actually calms you. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, well, I also have Crohn's, so I've been like stoned for. He's like, got Crohn's disease, years, so. and it helps a lot with the Crohn's. Yeah, it helps, it helps dramatically. He said, "Yeah." And you took one hit, and you were fucking. Smoke no comment. Pete uh, Davidson's demise. Dude, I, 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 <laughs> we were everybody was having fun in the dressing room, and I was like, "I'll be right back. I have to go, like, do a skit. Do a skit. Yeah." And I came back, and Pete just saw the couch like this. <sighs> You're through. I asked that boy, I was like, hey, what's up with Pete? He's like, oh, he took a hit of the <laughs> stick. <laughs> I, was like, I was just focused on the show, bro. Yeah. Um, every time we have a special guest on the show, like a great Pete Davidson, we like to <coughs> dig through a crate of records. That's mm. what old fucks do. This okay, is called this Digging part is boring. They're going to dig through a crate of records. I just want to show you how they uh, wrap up the show here. Mushrooms is a fun thing to do. <laughs> By Dude, way, what if I was on the Verrazano Bridge? And you know, Batman, what if there was a Wu-Tang symbol? <laughs> and luckily, I have friends that are also high, and they're like, sick. <laughs> That's how that happens. Last thing about Sad Island, your mom was on the Mother's Day SNL. Was it fun having a little thing with your mom? No, it was a nightmare. Why? It's always a nightmare when the moms come, because, like, you know. The moms? It's, we don't want them there. Uh, it's like any situation when yeah, your parents you are forced to be there. Yeah, you don't want your mom at work. And also, it's just like we were just, it's so sad to watch them don't with pick a script that record in the like, hello, Pete. <laughs> hello, Pete. And I'm just like, I just fucking like, I have to like explain to my mom, like, she was like, how do I say this? And I was just like, just talk to me like you're, uh, you know, talk to me like you're in the kitchen. And she's like, oh, like regular. And, and you're like, like, that's not. Yeah. I was like, how are you reading it? And she was like, hello, Pete. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for my guy, Pete Davis. That's how, that's how you end shows? This is the interview. This is how we end the interview. That's how you end a show? Well, watch. Check out the finale. You are out of your fucking mind. Watch wow. this. All right, that's it.
You fuck. Whoa, are you whoa, serious? Whoa, I got more. I got more. Wow. Check out the finale of SNL with Tina Fey and Nicki Minaj this Saturday he night. Have more Shout out to little baby it. Stalin Nadeska, Ace Hood for stopping by. Shout out to And of course, Deska. Pete Davidson from Staten Island. This is open lane. Okay. There it was. What's wrong with that? Two fools for the price of one. Peter Rosenberg makes my skin crawl. But this Pete Davidson. That's him handling it the best he could. Remember, these are professional show businesses. When you say, oh, I don't know, he seemed like he was okay. That's like putting on the act over the pain. Uh, he's a mess. And we're about to see some thrilling moves from this guy. But it was just breaking news right while we were talking about this. Because this was another one of my downfalls that I had here. Remember Mac Miller, that disgusting... Terrible rapper. Pull up a Mac Miller song. Let's see. Mac Miller was the worst. I've always... And he was another fuck Donald Trump guy, right? Yeah. Didn't he, he do something? Oh, no, he has a song. Never mind. Didn't he do something with Trump? Give me that Mac Miller Trump thing. Let's see. Mac Miller Trump. But he also has an old song called Donald Trump from before the Trump uh, presidency yes. days. But then one time... Trump. He hate, yeah. This, then we need... Oh, didn't he do? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was this. this is it. Look at this. This is the guy. Uh, Going, my favorite is his beef with rapper Mac Miller. Now, Mac made a song called Donald Trump in 2011. Trump initially, he initially lauded the song. The Donald Trump song just hit over 20 million. That's not so bad. I'm very proud of that. This kid is the new Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> is he doing an impression of himself? What a nice guy. Yeah. Okay, so that's I, nice. The song that's the president. Yeah. And then Trump threatened to sue Miller for royalties for use of his name. So in turn, Mac Miller denounced Trump, telling his Twitter followers, just please don't elect this motherfucker, man. All right? This don't is true. Don't elect this motherfucker. This is true, right? It's great. Okay. So, now. He's the new Eminem. On one hand, I love this. this is just Trump <laughs> being Trump. But on the other Why hand, is he the new Mac Miller is here, and he's pissed. So just please he's welcome multi-platinum selling rapper, no Trump go. feud, participant Mac Miller, everybody. Yeah. Miller. Mac, Mac Miller. Oh, look at this motherfucker, huh? Have you ever seen? Thank you, Larry. I only have one thing to say. I hate you, Donald Trump. Ooh. I remember, you know, this was right when it was starting, too, because it didn't used to be where people just went out and said, I fucking hate you, Donald Trump. Remember when that first started happening? We were like, whoa, this is pretty crazy, man. This is pretty crange. Uh... Yeah, because I remember I remember thinking this was crazy, but now I'd be like, oh, yeah, of course. You know, but back then, believe me, people, uh, you didn't do this type of stuff on national TV. So you wanted to sue me, but then you realize you can't sue somebody just for being super talented and incredibly good looking. Ooh. You say you want to make America great again, but we all know what that really means. You know, ban Muslims, Mexicans are rapists, black lives wow. don't matter. Make America great again. I think you want to make America white again. Fuck so yeah, woo! I come no. here today as a white man <laughs> with the hope that maybe you'll listen to me. In other words, let me white explain this to you, you racist son of a bitch. Wow. You see, you're lowering the bar for our nation's intelligence. Your only goal is to stay in the spotlight, no matter how much it fuels the fire of hate groups that you apparently know nothing about, like uh, the KKK and neo-Nazis. You have people at your And this is, this is just like that Peter Rosenberg. The white dudes in the hip-hop community feel they got to, like, double down to make sure everybody knows their stance. Oh, we hate racists. We're on your team. And that's what Eminem did. You know, these guys... Uh, every day they wake up going, the hip hop community is still letting me. I mean, G Easy wakes up every day going, I'm still allowed to be inside the hip hop community. This is crazy. And every day, I mean, they're doing their Hail Marys a million times. They're sitting on the little Muslim carpet. They're doing all the prayers they can to stay into this community. And when every day the news comes out, they make sure to double down on. Whatever, all oh, the black side, whatever the black side thinks, we are going to be 10 times in their favor. 
Because if they dared agree with one of the other things, they'd be kicked out of hip hop. That's exactly where Eminem went. You know, I think Eminem, again, I think every white rapper, every day they wake up, uh, they're uh, paralyzed in worry that they're going to be kicked out of this hip-hop community. And I think they do whatever it takes to stay in. And this is what Mac Miller was doing. You know, we've seen them all do it. Allies who openly assault black teenage girls because, hey, that's American. The messed up thing is... I don't even really know if you're evil. I think you're just such an egomaniacal, attention-thirsty, psychopathic, power-hungry, delusional waste of skin and bones that you'll, that you'll, that you'll do, say, or relax. This dude's teeth, speaking of presidents, this guy's got George Washington's set of teeth. <laughs> They're fully wood. Very thick. Look at Mac Miller's fucking eye. Uh, you guys can't see it. That's really, really beige. I think they're so bad you can see from the tiny screen. They're held in with wood glue. They're all different shapes. They're all different shapes and cuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's some fucking jacked up teeth. So now that you've seen how he looks, now that you've seen his teeth, you've seen how he acts, all of a sudden, they announce, just like when we hear Colin Jost. Do you know who's Colin Jost from SNL, the fucking white news correspondent on SNL, the, the biggest loser we've ever seen on TV, Colin Jost. Oh, he's just, he's dating Scarlett Johansson. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, of course, why shouldn't he be? And then you, when you hear this name, Scarlett Johansson's name still rings with, oh, hubba hubba, right? <laughs> Scarlett Johansson, a.k.a. hubba hubba. But please, I encourage you, to Google a few things. Here, I'll find her Three things. Ball pick. Three words. Scarlett Johansson 2018. Hit search. Hit images. Hit search tools. Hit size. Hit larger than two megabytes. <laughs> you will see that Scarlett Johansson does not equate to hubba hubba va va voom. It equates to... Oh, she is like a dyke now. So, I'm sick of people thinking Scarlett Johansson, oh, she's so hot. She's not hot anymore. You got to see what she looks like. Uh, she's disgusting. Look at this woman. Hi, I'm Scarlett Johansson. Hi. Hi, how are you? You like my bob? My inverted bob? Do you like my pixie cut? Yeah, more of a pixie. I'm anti all Mike's beliefs. So, she's ruined. But Mac Miller, he scoops up. You know who Mac Miller starts dating? Anthony Cumia's would-be dream girl if she wasn't Latino. Ariana Grande. Mac Miller starts dating the Latino pedophile's dream, Ariana Grande. The girl with the smallest butt in history. Um... <laughs> But they just broke up. That was one of the downfalls. Mac Miller dumped by Ariana Grande. Like a week ago. Like a week ago. And now you're telling me that the breaking news is that Pete Davidson mm -hmm. is dating Ariana Grande. That's wow. the rumor report. Look at that. And I am disgusted. This is really fucked up. Why does Ariana Grande date these... Unsuspectable guy. You know what I mean? It's more weird. It's like, just like, why? Because I like her. You like Ariana Grande. But. Not me. These choices. She's a little too nutty for me. She's a little tiny nut. <laughs> her hair. She's gone through like three different complete identities as well. Like if you look at pictures of Ariana Grande when she was on the, Dis was it Disney or yeah, Nick? Yeah, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon completely different person she was tall <laughs> she was she wide she was older like totally different she was much older so i don't trust any of them i don't know what's going on i hope pete davidson isn't with ariana grande but now they could relate pete davidson's dad died on 9-11 and ariana grande's, ariana grande's fans died at one of her concerts all by the hand of them terrorists i found a great before and after yeah let's see this before and after here Ariana seems kind of ratty, someone says. Has anybody here ever fucked her before? 
So here There's she was before, and there she was down. after. This is a different person. They body swapped because she got shorter. She wasn't even Latina one of the years. <laughs> Seriously. And now she's Latina. And believe me, there was something up with her in that uh, bombing, right? Wasn't she associated with that? And then she came out with that song, No More Tears Left to Cry. And it's like, tell it to the family. <laughs> <laughs>